My name is Christina Cavacciuti. My name is Paolo Roberto Cavacciuti. My name is Pierre Cavacciuti. Pino Cavacciuti was my father. I am the son of Pino Cavacciuti. Pino was my father. My dad came from a village in Italy uh, called Pedina. He came to London uh, when he was a young man and met my mum. Basically they married, they set up a business together and they lived in London for about 50 years. I just think of my dad telling jokes, that's what I remember predominantly. He was very, um, he, he liked being around people and he liked having a laugh and enjoying life. Um, and I remember my dad just having jokes really when I think about him, that's the first thing I think of. He was always very keen to look very smart. He took after my, my, my zio Franco, my uncle Franco, who always had a collar and tie. You know, when my dad did pass, my mum did say to me that, you know, uh, there wasn't a night that my dad wouldn't kiss my mum on the lips and uh, say, you know, I love you before he went to sleep. But he'd never do those kind of things in front of us. The Italians have a word, a phrase, bella figura which is looking good in front of everybody, in front of people. He eventually met my mum and then together they had a cafe and a restaurant in Clerkenwell for about 30 years. And yeah, that's what he did for a living. Shortly after they gave up the cafe, we started to notice uh, little things and we were aware that it was, we were aware that things weren't as they should be, but at the same time you're kind of, you're a little bit, in denial, a little bit defensive. So this is what used to be the Aylesbury Cafe. Um, so I spent most, a lot of my youth here. And as I said, so this, the cafe, the kitchen was downstairs. I don't know if it still is. It might be on the first floor now, because I, I think even when we left, we'd moved it up to the first floor. And we used to live on the top two floors there. Yeah, it was a living. The Italians were very good at it, because one thing they know about is food, hospitality. I remember leaving my parents at the flat after it was confirmed that he had uh, dementia. Um, and I remember calling my brother and then my sister to, to confirm what they'd found. And I, I just couldn't, I couldn't bring the words, I couldn't say it to my brother that it had been confirmed. Our fears had been confirmed because I knew how it was going to go because I'd already seen it with my, my wife's uh, grandmother so uh, it, it wasn't pleasant and because I, as I said I knew what was going to come so one of the, the most difficult things that I find is I can't remember the last conversation I had with my dad where he gave me a piece of advice because it, it, it was from you know around 2002 to 2003 where he, he wasn't quite right so his personality changed completely. He was, he became very withdrawn, um, very quiet, barely spoke. The biggest effect is that we lost my dad, I think, a lot longer before he actually passed away because he wasn't the person he was before, I think. I always used to think to myself, my dad would have hated seeing the way that he turned out. He, he, he loved to look good, he loved to feel strong, look strong. So when I think of the last few months when he was at Scalabrini where he was bed bound and he'd lost, you know, almost half his body weight and uh, not being able to go to the bathroom unaided, he would have hated that. Say goodbye to him, Baba. Say goodbye, Mama. Bye, Mama. When I turned up at my sister-in-law's house, um, one, one of the family friends, a guy called Aldo, who is just a little bit younger than what my dad would have been. He said, oh, how's your dad? And I just burst into tears because I had to say, he didn't recognize me. And that was tough. When, it actually, when you actually accept it, that was tough. The day before my dad passed away, I was, I was at the home with my son, Luca, and we waited there for about 40 minutes. 
And I was saying, look, uh, let's just leave Nonno. We'll go home because he's not going to wake up. He's tired. He's tired. And my, my son, bless him, he kept on saying, no, no, he's going to wake up. He's going to wake up. And th then we'll say goodbye. Then we'll say goodbye. So he was proved right. As soon as my dad woke up, Luca jumped off my lap and basically approached my dad. My dad managed to raise himself from his bed and he, he stroked Luca on the face and then gave him a kiss on the lips. Luca turned around to me and said, I told you you'd wake up, Dad. And then my dad just went back to sleep. And that was the day before he died. So it was almost like he was saying goodbye. I think there was a sense of relief. You know, relief that my father, me personally, I, I, I think there was a sense of relief that my father wasn't suffering anymore, that he, you know, it, it he, I don't think he physically suffered very much, um, but I, I used to hate seeing him bewildered. You, you see on TV these last conversations people have on their deathbeds and they, they recognise everybody and they have all this, you know, they, we, we had none of that because my dad wasn't speaking for such a long time. We had the funeral in Italy at the village church. There was a moment during the mass where we were all sat alongside each other and um, we were all holding hands all at the same time. So I was sat with my sister, my sister was sat next to my mum, my brother was sat next to my mum and we were all kind of like linked hands. So we weren't just sitting there with our hands on our lap, we were all holding each other's hands at the same time. And for me that, that sums up our, our strength, our unity and our togetherness. My name is Rina Bardini, in Cavaciuti because I married him. <laughs> I think it has brought us together in a lot of ways because I think sometimes painful things, painful situations do, don't they? But whilst we might not see each other, you know, every week or are not on the phone every two minutes, when, when things matter, we come together and we do it together. Going through the whole experience, I think, to, to lose someone, I think it does bring you closer because you all go through it together and it's and just, just the things that we've done recently, for example, the, the, the um, memory walk, that's something that we wouldn't have done necessarily if it wasn't because of my dad's illness. And that was something that I, I'm really proud of our whole family for doing. And I think, you know, I, I, think, it, I, I think it shows that we, we come together when we need to come together, which is, I think is what the whole point of a family. He never looked for anybody. He, he didn't remember the name of the, the, the children. Ma, he remembered my name, ma non my name, real my name, ma, ma mujer, mujer, because I was his wife. He couldn't remember his, my name, he, couldn't, he, ma, he remembered mujer. Then I don't know why, but I think uh, he mean he used to love me. I suppose, as I said, I don't know if it was my father's death or my age or the fact my kids are getting older. You, you are aware of that. You are aware that there's a beginning, a middle and an end. And you don't really ever know when the end is coming. You can philosophise a lot, but actually you have to just get on with life. This kind of event, this kind of trauma um, is part of it. Grief is the price you pay for love.